Good morning. Welcome to Elkton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Eric, and it's good to be with you here today. Uh, I want to wish all of you a very happy Mother's Day. I know today may be a real mix of emotions. On one hand, there are those of us who still have our beloved mothers to uh, hold and to love and to see. And uh, I love you, Mom. It's nice to see you. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have a good time zooming today together. Um, but I know that, uh, like I said, there's those of us who have our mothers, but also for others, the, the grief of having lost your mother is still so near and so real uh, that this day may bring that grief to the surface. Um, you try to stir up all those wonderful memories of mom, but it still can be a tough time uh, for you if you've lost your mother. And then there are others of us who, where Mother's Day is difficult for other significant reasons, of which we must be mindful and considerate. Um, but today, I'm grateful for all the women in my life who have cared for me, those who have 
uh, shown me hospitality, those who have nurtured me, uh, those who, who have imparted wisdom and a lot of advice, and those who have encouraged me. I remember at my uh, first church where I served as a youth pastor, I was just a young guy then, uh, one of the women in my church bought me a book titled, How to Organize Your Life. She was definitely trying to tell me something, I think, but uh, in all the churches I've served and communities I've lived, I, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to have had families who have taken me in when I'm un unable to be with my family you know, for certain holidays. I can't tell you how grateful I am uh, to have been given home-cooked meals and even some leftovers to take home from time to time. I've been given hugs and warmth and love by people to whom I have no relation at all, who I consider to be family. I'm surrounded by mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters, the people who embody the love of God to me. Uh, remember all of those people in your life today and be comforted that you are welcome into the family of God forever. You know, let us turn our hearts to God, who is the source of all love, as we prepare ourselves for worship this morning. Would you please pray with me in a moment of centering silence? Good morning and happy Mother's Day again. If you're able, will you please rise for our call to worship? <laughs> See what love has been given to us, that we should be called children of God. By this we know, love, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and lived and died, that God's love might be made plain among us. Therefore, beloved, let us not love in word or in speech, but in deed and in truth. Because we love one another, we know that we have passed from death into life. This is the victory that overcomes the world through Jesus, our risen Christ. Amen.
Thank you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Loving and merciful one, we thank you for the community in which you have placed us, for the brothers and sisters with whom we walk this pilgrim journey. Yet we confess that we fail to love as you love. We push aside those whom we believe are the least in your kingdom. We fail to see your kingdom in parables because we fail to see your kingdom in each other. Form in us a new vision of community in which there is neither east nor west, neither south nor north. We pray for the sake of your kingdom that both is and is not yet. Amen. God has remembered God's steadfast love to all the people. We are healed and called to, to again be God's beloved children and witnesses. Receive that healing love and share the good news with all you meet, that God is love and in God there is no darkness or fear. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, ladies. That's one of the joys of being a worship leader. You get to hear two, terse, two services. Thank you. Beautiful. Today's New Testament lesson is 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.
Thank you again, and what a nice way to honor your mother and to honor our church family. And thank you, Brian. Our gospel lesson is John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. If you are able, will you please rise? As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. indeed. In our gospel lesson today, we are reassured that Jesus is our friend. And Jesus calls us friends. And Jesus already showed us that he was willing to play more than his part when he was willing to go to the cross for us, when he was willing to suffer for us and even die for us. Now, Jesus is calling us to live as a friend to him and to do likewise by living our lives for the sake of others. That's a real challenge to us. How can we be a friend to Jesus? Well, we love others as he first loved us. And Jesus says in verse 13, no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. I don't know if you heard the recent news story uh, from Ocean City where there was a really bad accident a few weeks ago on the Route 90 bridge. And Jonathan Bauer, he witnessed that accident and was Uh, hurriedly checking on the occupants of the vehicles that were involved in the crash. And he ran over to help one man who was trying to get out of a truck that had flipped over the railing and was hanging off the side of the bridge. Once the man was freed, uh, Bauer said the man was in shock and was just pointing uh, to the water toward a car seat and a little girl in a pink dress who was floating there on her back in the water. As Bauer saw her, she rolled over and was then face down in the water. And that's where uh, and when Bauer sprung into action. He threw his legs over the side of the railing. He hailed his 13-year-old daughter who was in uh, the vehicle uh, and told her that he was about to jump so to get any emergency personnel who arrived and let them know what he was doing. And he jumped off the bridge to try and save that little girl. And as soon as he rescued her, the little girl, um, she cleared her lungs of all the water that she had inhaled, and she was then uh, taken to the hospital and experienced a a full recovery. And that family of that two-year-old girl will always remember Bauer as a friend. And folks, the reality is that there are millions of people around the world who are suffering and perishing People who need friends. They need to be rescued like that little girl. There are those who do not know the love of God who need friends. There are those who are struggling just for the basic necessities of life. Food and water and medicine. They need friends to help them, to save them. There are people near to us, neighbors and co-workers and friends and family who do not know the good news of the gospel and They need friends to encourage them with that news. 
in the Gospel of John, we're called to be Jesus' disciples. We're called to go out into the world and even risk our lives and livelihoods in order to share the love of God with the people of our communities. The parable of the Good Samaritan comes to mind. In the parable, the Good Samaritan, uh, of the Good Samaritan, Jesus, he tells us the story of a man who was traveling, but he was viciously attacked by robbers. He was left for dead in that ditch. And a priest walked by, and instead of helping the man, the priest crossed on the other side of the road and kept going. He avoided the man who was in distress in the ditch. Another religious leader walked by and did the exact same thing. They didn't care for this poor man in the ditch at all. In fact, they wanted to avoid the responsibility for him that they had. However, a Samaritan, normally looked down on by the society in which they lived, a Samaritan, he took pity on the man. He stopped and bandaged that man's wounds. He carried him to the nearest inn. The Samaritan stayed the night with him and told the innkeeper that he would pay for all of the expenses for caring for the man until he was well. Jesus says, all of us were to go out into the world and do likewise. We're to love people like that, like the Good Samaritan. There are people in your community who are lying in a ditch. There are people in the world who are lying in a ditch, and they need our help. They need us to help tend to them, to love them. Uh, the church isn't just a, a feel-good institution uh, for us to sit in our pews and receive encouragement from God. Yes, God graces us with such blessings and encouragements and hope. However, the world is too broken a place and there's too much good work that needs to be done. The stakes are too high for us to live in a state of idleness. God needs us to rise to the task to reach a broken and hurting world because the church is God's appointed institution for the salvation of God's beloved people. In verse 16 of our text, Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appoint you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then in verse 17, Jesus goes on. He says, I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Rising to such a task isn't easy. It doesn't come naturally to us. Our natural state, I think, is to take the easy path, the path of least resistance. It's to do just what we need to get by. It's to focus on ourselves and our own needs first before others. However, Jesus is telling us that we need to grow into true disciples. We need to put others first. We need to love people in our communities and across the world. We need to grow into people who are truly capable of loving one another in the way that Jesus first loved us. The work that Jesus' disciples did to prepare for their uh, mission to share the gospel, it included lots of learning from Jesus. They constantly asked questions and they listened to Jesus' teachings and they grew in their faith. And they were curious about the ways of God. And they were introspective and reflective about their own lives. And they oftentimes trained by doing and, and learned from their failures. And they made a lot of mistakes along the way. But they were growing into the people that God created them to be. And yes, they suffered. Yes, life for them was oftentimes unfair. But they ended up changing the world nonetheless. So yes, life is sometimes going to be unfair for us. We can wallow in it or do something about it. We can do good and love one another and make this broken world a better place, or we can add to the suffering. Or we can just give up and allow that suffering to continue without any action on our part. But Jesus acted as a true friend to all of us, and he calls upon all of us to learn from his example. We must be the hands and feet of Christ, but that takes work on our part to train and grow into the person that God created us to be. And when I first began living, 
on my own, you probably would have been pretty grossed out by my bachelor pad. Uh, I was suddenly living on my own. I was away from the accountability of my family and my friends and my roommates. It took months of forming new habits before I didn't have dishes that were piling this high in the sink, even getting stinky because those dishes sat there so long. I think even some of them had mold growing on them. I had dressers that collected a lot of dust, dirty laundry that was thrown in my closet and left there, and clean laundry that just sat in the clothes baskets. And I think those first couple of months, I mostly just pulled clothes out of the clothes baskets rather than folding them and putting them away. And if they were too badly wrinkled, I just tossed them in the dryer for a few minutes, you know? It took a while for me to get my house in order, to learn from my mistakes, but I slowly got better uh, at it. I, I, you know, when I finally got my house in order, everything else became a little easier, too. When I learned these habits to be able to keep my home in order, and uh, I started learning other skills, too, like cooking. Instead of just popping hot dogs in the microwave and cooking Kraft mac and cheese, I began testing the water, steaming some vegetables, grilling some fish, making some spaghetti. Uh, slowly but surely, I was getting better at being an adult. Uh, I think the term they use nowadays is adulting, right? It's getting better at adulting. And that's what it's like for our Christian journey as well. Initially, we don't know what in the world we're doing as Christians. We're a mess ourselves. We're trying to figure this all out. We're broken, and we make plenty of mistakes ourselves, right? But as disciples, we need to have goals for becoming better disciples, learning more, growing in the faith, just like I slowly bettered myself and got my house and life in order. I know many of you already have your houses in order. I've been to your homes, and they're absolutely beautiful. Work on your family. Pray together. Study the scriptures with your spouse. Seek out activities to serve your community together. Do the same with your church family. Take an upper room devotional and read your Bibles and pray regularly and participate in Sunday school. Continue growing yourself so that you can help God bring healing into this broken world. We do this hard work because Jesus is our friend, and he showed us how, how to live our lives uh, by his loving example to us. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 says, Set your mind on things above, not on things that are earthly. So let us be true friends of God by setting our hearts and minds toward God, towards God's beloved people. Let us be focused on growing into true disciples and being the hands and feet of Christ in a broken and hurting world. Amen. As we come to a time of prayer, I have a number of names to lift up to you. I uh, would first ask that you... Uh, Say a prayer for Phil Kremer. Phil is Bob and Jane McDonald's brother-in-law, and he's facing some surgeries down in Florida. Also ask that you lift up the Perkins family. Uh, Bob Perkins' brother, Charles, passed away this week, and uh, so again, ask for prayers for the family. Larry Stork's funeral was this past Friday, and prayer for that family as well. Mike McCoskey, excuse me, <clears throat> Mike Mahoskey has been released from the hospital, but still requires oxygen. So we please please pray for a please please pray for a full recovery for him. And I see some smiles out there. Are we doing okay? Okay, good. Prayers for Rita Norman. Uh, Rita had a bad fall and broke her arm and wrist wrist, and she does uh, have to face a couple of surgeries. Anna Barrett, Millie Jones' sister, is in the hospital with multiple health problems and COVID, and so we ask for prayers for her recovery. And I would also like to lift up Kenny and Phyllis McCoy at this time. And now will you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, 
we come before you today on this special day, Mother's Day, a day that has been set aside to honor mothers everywhere. Lord, we are so thankful for the love and many kindnesses that our mothers have shown as they have helped and continue to help us throughout our lives. While some of our mothers may no longer be with us, their memories remain alive and their contributions still serve as guiding lights for we who remain. Please watch over them in heaven, for we know that they are secure in your loving hands. We also pray that you will watch over the mothers in our midst, <clears throat> the mothers and stepmothers of our children, as well as the mothers who raised us. The women who are such a miraculous combination of toughness and tears, advisors and listeners, spenders and savers, and pillars of strength, yet fountains of tenderness. Grant them, <clears throat> pardon me, grant them your love as they have so graciously given theirs to their children. We thank the Almighty Father for that particular expression of your love that is given to our children and us so selflessly by mothers everywhere. We also thank and praise you for your love, friendship, and vision that we should love one another as you have loved each one of us and that we are your friends if we follow your commandment. Father, this seems like such a simple request but we know that in these times of political divide, heightened racial and ethnic strife, disease and worldwide tension, loving one another frequently seems impossible. Please give us strength to follow your commandment and to rise above hatred, bigotry, and long-held beliefs so that we might bear the fruits of respect, friendships, understanding, greater love, and the wonderful joy of living through your example. Father, we daily see the need for your guidance, and we ask that you will continue to watch over us. Please be with those who have been beset with sickness, death, difficult decisions, and personal dilemmas, and somehow whisper in their ears that we are thinking of them and praying that you will continue to be our best friend and show them the light that will lead us from doubt and uncertainty into the sunshine of your love. And now, as your friends who abide in your love, we all pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Dick. And at this time, I want to lift up a, a few announcements. I just want to thank you, first and foremost, for your offerings that continue to sustain our church. And you can continue to give in several ways. Uh, for those who are worshiping with us virtually, you can use the church website, or you can send in your offerings to the church office. Um, also, we have an offering plate in the back as well of the church here um, by, the, by the entrance to the sanctuary. You may drop your offering off if, uh, if you, as you leave today. Um, the office this week will be open 9 a.m. to noon time, Monday through Friday. Uh, I always look forward to seeing some of you. You've been dropping by, and it's been a real joy to me. I do have um, time uh, to be with you all if you want to come by, so just call on uh, to the church office and set up an appointment with me. I'd love to sit with you for a little while and just shoot the breeze and talk about life and faith and um, all of those things. So uh, don't hesitate to do that if you would like to get to know me better so that I can also get to know you better too. 
Um, also, the main newsletter is available at any of the welcoming kiosks around the church or online at the church website as well. Um, I will be doing this week a Wednesday noontime uh, Bible reflection on Facebook Live, uh, so you can tune in there if you want to join me. Yeah, feel free to, and uh, the video of that uh, live reflection will be available later in the day as well, so if you miss it, you can always watch it later. Also, there's a Wednesday communion service that's held uh, the, the second and fourth Wednesdays of every month at 6.15 p.m., uh, and the next one, of course, is this coming Wednesday, and all are welcome to attend. Um, this week is also Ascension uh, Week, which, where Thursday we celebrate the Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I think they're going to do a little bit of celebration at the communion service for that, too, this week, so, so join them. Also, virtual Sunday school for children of all ages is available. Uh, Katie does a wonderful job and uploads those videos uh, every week for our children and youth, so uh, I encourage you to sit with your children and to um, encourage them to participate in the Sunday school class, and uh, you feel free to participate yourself. It's just a wonderful uh, way to consider God and God's love for us. Also, there are other adult Sunday school classes that are meeting. Uh, Ivan Mahosky's class, um, Tradition and Wisdom, they meet down uh, stairs in the chapel after the 8.30 a.m. worship service, um, and so uh, does the women's Bible class, uh, the, the women's uh, Sunday school class, Uppity Women of the Bible. Uh, so I encourage you to uh, tune in and join them if you're interested. There, we do have virtual Sunday school classes as well uh, that are meeting uh, via Zoom, so if you're interested in connecting with any of those classes, uh, call into the office and we'll help you out. Uh, also, Ivan Mahosky is leading a Bible study in Weldon Hall every Tuesday uh, from 10 a.m. to noontime. Uh, that'll uh, be going on through June the 22nd. Uh, the study examines the meaning of each chapter of the book of Revelation, and all are welcome uh, to join him. Uh, also, Kathy Golke is going to be here May 22nd uh, to do a book signing between the two services. And her new book, Night Bird Calling, is available as well. If you love her books, bring some of your books if you would like to get them signed or come out to browse her selection of historical fiction. She's well known in our community for her amazing writing skills. So come on in on May the 22nd for her book signing. Also join us for the Elkton Memorial Day Parade on Monday, May the 31st. Uh, dress up in your patriotic attire. Uh, we'll be walking in the parade together. We'll have a float and hand out promotional materials. Um, uh, we'll gather here at the church at 9 a.m. to help decorate the float. And I believe the parade itself begins uh, at 11 a.m. Um, also, I highly encourage you to get vaccinated. Uh, the vaccin vaccines, they've just they've been amazing. And it's amazing to see what they're doing in our country. And we're hopeful that we're going to be able to produce vaccines for the rest of the world, too, with our uh, abundance of vaccines that we have. And I know over 250 million doses have already been given in the USA, and uh, that's pretty amazing. So I know receiving the vaccine, it protects us and others, and it's essential for us to be able to lead a more normal life. So I encourage you to get vaccinated, if at all possible. Um, well, that's all the announcements that I have for you today. We're going to close out our time of worship together uh, as we enjoy the very appropriate hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Friends and beloved of Christ, you have been chosen to go into the world with the message of God's love. Bear fruit of hope and joy, of peace and justice with all that you meet. And may God's peace be with you all. Amen.